The Gospel for this Sunday is from St. Mark, chapter 6, beginning at verse 30. The apostles returned to Jesus from their ministry tour and told him all that they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let us go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by a boat to a quiet place where they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving. And people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began to teach them many things. Now late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said to them, you feed them. With what? They asked. We have to work for months to even earn enough to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have? Jesus asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. Then Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so that they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. And a total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Uh, just a couple of uh, items before I begin the sermon proper. I just want to check. Um, Joe and Pat. Olivia, you're here? Excellent. And Josh? You up there? Great. And Michaela? And so are you ready during the offering to come and make a presentation about your time at the District Youth Convention? Can you give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up? Olivia, thumbs up, okay. So instead of singing, what shall I render to the Lord, Donna, we're going to have the youth give a presentation uh, just for us. Second thing, I, I got to make sure that I know which flock I'm dealing with. You guys are not a bunch of cows, are you? No bulls here? You know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not a bunch of wolves, are you? You know, like I just want to make sure that, you know, that there's no wolves here. You're not mountain lions. Okay. What animal are you? Together? Okay, so if you, would you take your hands like this and just put them up here? And would you go, bah, bah, okay? I just want to make sure that, that I know what animal that we're, I'm dealing with, I'm working with. Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. I hope you will agree with me that Psalm 23, the shepherd psalm, is one of the most memorized passages in all of the Bible. When I think of my Sunday school time here at Grace, and then vacation Bible school at my grandparents' house, and other times, you know, when they say memorize the Bible, there were two Bible passages for sure that were most memorized. One was John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and off it goes, right? But the second most memorized passage is 
Psalm 23. It's unbelievable how many people, both in the church and those who have no bearing at all with Jesus and outside of the church, somehow know Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. And these words from the psalm have inspired songs. We're going to sing a couple this morning. Have inspired uh, poetry. And now take a look here. See that? The stained glass window that's, that we, we really find beauty is from Psalm 23. And I just want to highlight that coming up now in, at the end of August, when we resume our Wednesday morning coffee fellowship, that I will be holding a six-part Bible study on Psalm 23. That's Wednesday morning at what, 10.30? Suzanne, 10.30 to noon fellowship, and then within that time, I will be doing a teaching on, for six weeks just before I go to Europe, on Psalm 23. I invite everyone to come, but especially ladies, because it started with them, and come and enjoy fellowship and coffee. Uh, my daughter will bake a few more cookies and so forth. And, but also come bring your Bible. Together we'll sit and share God's Word and know Jesus better in our life. When we examine Psalm 23, we must realize that this psalm is in a rural setting. That we no longer have streets with names like 53rd Avenue or Grand Avenue or, you know, whatever it might be here in Camrose. There are no road maps. There are no buildings in Psalm 23. There's no policemen or firemen. You know, there's no university that often dots the Camrose community. There's no ATM machines or Royal Banks or Bank of Montreal. Nothing like that at all. There's not even McDonald's mentioned in Psalm 23 or Wendy's or anything like that. I mean, what I say sounds so obvious here when you live in a city in 2014. But when we want to get to the heart of this psalm, we have to transport ourselves, literally find ourselves not in an urban setting, but in a rural setting where you become, together everyone, come on, I want to see my sheep. Come on, Richard, yeah, uh, get them up there, come on. Come on, Otto, yeah, that's a, come on, Milda, get your sheep ears up, come on. We're sheep. We are a flock, and as a flock of sheep, we need quiet waters to drink. We need green pastures to feed. We need protection by the shepherd from those natural enemies that seek to hurt and harm us. And we always need tender, loving care for the well-being of us as a flock. I mean, if you come to Psalm 23 with a mindset of an urban dweller, of a big city person, you will find what I'm going to say strange to you. You will find the words of Psalm 23 yeah, they sound like English, but I really don't understand them. But if this morning you will allow yourself to be persuaded by the Holy Spirit who is here to let your minds be opened and renewed to Jesus who's ministering to his flock of sheep, then I am convinced, I am persuaded, I am blessed to know that Jesus will make this psalm make sense to you. Especially verse number four, where we hear these words. Again, I want to say them. Even though I, got it? Even though 
me. It's going to happen to me, not to just somebody else. It's going to take place to me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Join me silently in this prayer. Thank you, our great shepherd and good shepherd Jesus, for calling us into your flock, for leading and guiding us from the moment of conception until that hour comes when we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Help us this morning, Lord Jesus, to be comforted by your real presence, to be renewed in our heart, in our mind, in our faith, in trusting you so that we will not be afraid and fear no evil that comes our way. For I ask this in your name. Amen. <clears throat> My cousin knows that I speak about him on Sunday morning on the occasion. And I just, you know, Lord bless him. You know, he's a wonderful, close as a brother. But he shows me things about life that as an urban dweller I have forgotten, you know, as a biblical teacher because of the rural setting. Like this Sunday, you know, like for this Sunday, he kept reminding me, Greg, remember you're dealing with sheep, you're not dealing with cows. And he's a, he's a cattle man, you know. He can leave his cows on the open range and he's absolutely convinced that they're not going to overgraze the grass. But that's not true with sheep. Sheep need to be constantly on the move. They need to go from pasture A and they need to go over to pasture B to pasture C to pasture D. Not pasture D, but pasture D, you know? They need to find healthy food sources, pure and clean water. Otherwise, the flock will kill themselves. They will overgraze and they will not drink water. And the only way to help the sheep be on the move, and this is where Dean would say at least a cow has enough brains to go, sheep don't have that. Sheep literally need the shepherd to lead them and to guide them to those fresh, alpine meadows to those quiet still waters where there is clean and pure water but to get from the everyday plain that psalm 23 talks about to get from that place where there's an open pasture to go up to the mountain to go up to the alpine meadows the flock needs to go through the valleys you got that? No longer do shepherds sort of put them in the truck and transport them to the field. I mean, we might do that today, but back then in Psalm 23, that did not happen. No transport truck, no safe super highway, and there's no way getting around going from the pastures in the valley to the alpine meadows. You had to take your sheep through the valley up the mountain valley and when they start going up when you see that when they start going up this pathway is filled with dangers lurking behind this bush maybe or that rock is a wolf a mountain lion. The shepherd needs to know the weather conditions because as quickly as this, as an Alberta clipper, it can go from sun to snowfall, from calm, quiet, dry to wet and soggy, and sheep quickly freeze and die. You know, unlike a cow, my cousin says, its hide is thick sheep's skin is thin 
and it will quickly freeze and tear. And going up the valley, the shepherd needs to watch out for those, you know, calm and quiet places where maybe there lurks a poisonous plant that will cause stomach indigestion, you know, for the sheep. All these dangers are present when the sheep go through the valley, when the flock together moves toward that alpine meadow where they need to get to for good grazing. And the only safety that the flock has, the only protection that the flock has is the certainty that the shepherd knows his sheep is the certainty that the shepherd is with them, is the certainty that the shepherd will not cause you, O oh sheep, to be lost or to die. It is the personal, intimate relationship with the shepherd that saves the sheep as they go through the valley. You catching it? Oh, sheep, are you catching it? You know, I think this is a fitting description of our earthly journey here, you know. We are the sheep of God's pasture. Some of us are a little bigger than others. Some of us are a little older than others. But we all need to be on the move. We are all going toward our heavenly home. This place here on earth is not heaven. Heaven is that place which is still before us. And we need to be on the move to get there. And every day we need to find for our spiritual life, you know, clean, clear water to quench the thirsting of our soul. We need the green pastures. You know, when I think of that, I, I was thinking of, remember uh, the green, green pastures of home? Who sang that song years ago? Who did, who was that? Bob Jones. Bob Jones. Remember that, you know? Tom Jones, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> you know, we need those green pastures. And the only person that God has appointed and called to take us from here, the moment we are born and born again, to their heaven, the only person who is able to do that is our shepherd. And what is his name? Let's make it very clear. His name is Jesus. Ah, I am the good shepherd, Jesus says. I know my flock, and my flock knows me. And I have other sheep, but I'm going to bring all these sheep so that they shall hear my voice and they shall become one flock with me, their one true shepherd. There's a question I ask oftentimes in confirmation. I think Michaela and Josh, you'll remember this question. I would put you on the spot to give the answer, but I won't. I say to confirmants. So tell me, who is your pastor? And inevitably, they're looking at me, right? And you know, the kids naturally want to say together, oh, our pastor is Greg Chose, right? If they say that, I look at them with scowl and go, no way, I am not your pastor. And they go, well, dad and mom told us you were our pastor, you know? Who is our pastor? Together, his name is? Jesus. Loudly? Jesus. Jesus. He is the only one who leads his flock. He is the only one who brings us home safely to heaven. I am but his messenger. He is your pastor. He is your shepherd. He is the one who will be with you from beginning to end. And your heart and your eyes and your mind is persuaded by the Spirit to keep focused on Jesus, your good shepherd. I want to shout this. Would you allow me to shout it? But I won't. I want to bang the pulpit like my grandfather used to do. But I won't. 
I have a staff. I want to take the staff and poke you with it. But I won't. But I do want you to know that this is so important to keep your eyes on Jesus because, and this is where it becomes crucial, there is a time that's coming for everyone here this morning. Now, before I continue, just take a look around you. Please, take a look. See the people. See your fellowship. Come on, turn around. Harold, uh, not Harold, uh, Albert, turn around. Milda, turn around, take a look. Come on, take a look. Do you see everybody? You can wave to them, you know. Everyone here this morning, and even you in TV land, everyone this morning is going to go through the valley of the shadow of death. You can't avoid it. You can't stop it. It's going to happen to you. Get a life, live a life, and be aware of this. And when you as a sheep enter into that valley, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, this morning, Jesus, your shepherd, Jesus, your pastor, is reminding you do not be afraid. I am going to be there with you as you go through. Just as the moment of conception, I will be with you in the moment of your passing. That's why these words speak truthfulness to our life. That's why these words, especially verse 4, bring comfort and peace to us who are the sheep of God. We know that a time is coming. For some, that time will come quickly. It'll be as if they're here today and gone tomorrow. For others, you will go through a valley where there is great pain and suffering. But all of us will go through the valley. No doubt about it. Sheep, are you catching that? Together? You got your ears up? Come on. Are you catching it? You know? Enjoy life then because today we are reminded as the sheep of God, the flock of the Lord, that he is moving us to a higher place. Heaven is our home. A place where there will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears. A place where there's a great marriage feast and a banquet set for us. But to get there, we all have to go through the valley. So don't be afraid. The Lord is with you. In fact, this morning when you come to Holy Communion, how do you know that Jesus has gone before you? Because he's been through the valley of the shadow of death. He did suffer and die for all of us. But death did not hold him down. Three days later, God did raise him from the dead. And God has placed him next to him, in, you know, sitting on the right hand of the Father. So that today here at Grace Community, at Grace Lutheran Church, we the sheep of the Lord are bold in saying, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And it is this same crucified and risen Jesus who is here ministering to us in this word, in these songs, and through this sacrament called Holy Communion. He is here leading and guiding you, calling you this morning, and I can name each one of you by name, but he knows who you are also, and he's speaking to you right now in your mind, in your heart, and he's calling you, my sheep hear my voice, and he's saying, come, come and follow me, come and trust me, come and know in your life that I will be with you in those last hours 
when you go through the valley of the shadow of death. And when that comes, you will fear no evil because I, Jesus, am with you. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Continue, O Holy Spirit, for Jesus' sake, to renew this trust and love for Jesus, our shepherd, our pastor, our shepherd who leads and guides us through the valley so that we may and one day be reunited with the loved ones who have gone before us and the saints in glory and the angels in glory. For I ask this in his name. Amen.